Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastry. Today I want to answer a question that I've been asked about 50 times. The question is, how much color pigment do you put in interior plaster? That is a tough one. I've had folks, uh, architects especially, say, Kirk, when you're doing this interior finish for me, use this scale, put this amount. I've had people say, use teaspoons. Me, when I'm doing interior color finishes, I'll just eyeball it, guys. And I tell folks, hey, it is what it is. I cannot be responsible. And if you want me to do it, I'll do it. If not, get somebody else. Because scales and all that, they're a real drag. Let me point out something, guys. First of all, say, let's take colors uh, companies. Now, this is La Habra, for example, because they're the biggest. You got BMI, Western, Omega. You got all kinds of manufacture of color coat cementitious color finishes. Now, when I say cementitious, I mean finishes like a brick. When they get wet, they darken. That lasts forever, like a brick. It lasts forever. The color doesn't come off, it doesn't uh, fade or chip off like paint. It just stays on forever. Yeah, it mellows with time or darkens, lightens, uh, does a lot of stuff. But let me give you an example, guys. Okay, since, we're, since I happen to have La Habra here, and it is one of my products that I use often, I want to point out, you see this color, the cover? Now, you see that color? I think it's Photoshopped myself, but that's dark and it's super rich. Usually you'll have to use a lime, you have to have a, a plaster, say like these right here. They have Portland cement for strength and then they have lime in them. How much? I don't know because they're not, they don't have to, they're not required to put the additives in here or the ratios of exactly how much. So we never know. We have right here Santa Barbara Smooth Mission Finish. And when we do a Santa Barbara Smooth Mission Finish, we're doing two coats. Of, it has more lime, or it should have more lime in it. And lime, um, the more coats you go, the richer it becomes. In fact, lime plastering has been done for the last five, 7,000 years. It, is, it lasts forever if you do it right. Now, how do they make lime? They get a rock, and they do magic to it. Okay, they, they get a rock. They heat it up to over 2,000 degrees. And they, they used to make the putties out of it. Now they, they take these limestones, and they heat it up, and bring it to a powder form. Same with gypsum. Uh, gypsum we're going to go over in a second. Anyway, you get the powder, you add it to it. The powder determines the color. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, I'm not sure how much that camera. There's about 30 earth tone colors. Earth tone colors. The majority of colors that people like. They're pleasing to the eyes. There's no reds, oranges, greens, and blues, but you could special order those, and I've done them all. Here we have Lifestyle colors. So what does that mean, guys? That's like the typical colors are two pound. They used to be boxes, but the cardboard boxes 20 years ago, I mean, when I'd have them, I'd fill up a whole shelf and they, they get wet, they just deteriorate. These are two pound color packs. These are like five pound, and I've had 10 pound color packs for specific colors. So when now we know for every, let's say for the sake of conversation to simplify this. These are all, most of your cement bags uh, for the last 50 to 100 years are 94 pound sacks. Why? I don't know, but they're 94 pounds, not 100. So 94 pounds, 94, 94. So if you take a two pound pack of color and you add it to 94 pounds, you will get this specific color almost on the money, almost every time. I've done it, I've done enough color coats, over 100 easy, and they're they're usually right on the money. Although when you read this, it protects themselves. They say, hey, too much water, too much moisture in the air, too much this, that. They protect themselves. Anyhow, now you take these colors and you go to say, now this is the question I get off, asked often. Can you use it for say a fast, a fast uh, set compound? Yes. Can you use it for a veneer? Yes. Can you use it for structural lights? Yes. Can you use it for Portland's white cement? Lehigh makes a white cement. Yes, but I don't encourage people to do that. I've done a house where we added color to white cement, Portland's, and we had a whole bunch of sand. It's three, 300 pounds of sand to 100 pound sack of Portland's white cement. That's uh, Lehigh makes it. To come up with a color that's integrated throughout the wall. Do I recommend people do that? No, you never get the color you want. You can try it, guys. I've tried it 50 times. You're never going to get the exact same color that you want. If you add it to the Imperials or the Diamonds, and again, veneer plasters that come in about 
10 different varieties, a um, whole bunch of different names. Imperial and Diamond are the ones my material yard happens to sell. These facets, uh, these, these are sheetrock compounds. They're gypsum. Gypsum, same thing like the lime. It's a rock. They heat it up, bring it to a powder form, boom, and that's gypsum plasters. Um, I got other things here, but for the sake of uh, trying to tell you guys how to add color to it, I'll, I'll get into that right now. Okay, for generally what we'll do is, for example, these are 100-pound sacks. A 100-pound sack, you're going to use a whole bag of this if you try to match the texture on one of these. Now, some of these other bags are 50, 50, 50, 25. So it's, it's kind of easy. You get 25, 50, and 100. So if you're using a 100-pound sack, you put a whole bag. If you're using a 50-pound sack, you use half the bag. If you're using a 25, you use a quarter. How do you figure that out? Well, again, the scales, that's not my style. I don't do it. And if somebody is real adamant these days and say, Kirk, I want you to use a scale, I just say, hey, you know what? Why don't you get somebody else? Because it's, it's not, you're never going to get the exact formula for interior because a lot of things make a big difference. With the cementitious, you can do that. With any of these, <laughs> If you try to get the same color with any of these, you got to think this. This will contaminate a mix. If you don't have a clean bucket, a clean drill paddle, these mixes, all of these will set faster. If this says 25 minute set and you add color, now just guess what? You need a 45 minute set if you could only handle 25 minute bags because it will accelerate this and it will do the same to all the rest of these. It will accelerate them. So there's a lot of stuff when trying to uh, determine how much color. That's why I don't usually get into it because it takes a lot of time in. For example, okay, here's a bag, two pounds. What I'll generally do is, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to say, okay, half there, quarters. Okay, so now we got quarters. Is this an exact science? No. Can, can I be more specific and measure it? Yes, uh, but it's so rare to get the exact color on interiors. Sometimes it'll have that bird's eye effect where you're putting it on it and then you take a piece of color that didn't mix in the bucket and then you're smearing it with, or you're spreading it with a chalk and trowel and you hit one of those clumps and it'll make a long streak. I love that. It's kind of the bird's eye look in wood. For here, it's a big no-no. Folks hate it. These colors come buried. When, say, you add this to any of these, and this, by, by the way, is a, it's just a gold color. But you add these to any of these guys right here, you will accelerate that. And when it dries, usually whatever, if it's a veneer, you mix it and it's wet. And when you apply it, it stays that same color. All the cementitious finishes, like what uh, Jason's standing on right now, if you mix those, they'll be wet and they'll darken like a brick. However, when those dry, it'll come out a lot lighter. So there, there's a whole lot of stuff to try to understand, like say base coat. Uh, 100, that's white. When the base coat is 200, that's gray. So you take a white base coat and you get certain colors. Certain colors require different base coats. So you take all of this stuff into consideration when you're adding colors to, uh, say, the veneer plasters or the, even the sheetrock compounds, even the gypsum plasters. There's a whole bunch of gypsum plasters too, guys. So when people say, hey, Kirk, can you add it to the base coat? I say, yeah, we can do that. Uh, but unless we're going to skip it and miss some, you're not going to see the base coat because I'm going to cover it with a top coat. You add it to the top coat, but I've done it, the base coat too. I've done it almost every which way you could imagine. So I'm trying to answer best I can with for you homeowners who say, gee, I'm going to give that a shot. It's a wee bit more complicated than just these uh, putting it in half and then putting it in quarters. Anyway, guys, uh, you could, uh, Dan, I'm working with my son, Dan, check this this magazine out if you could zero in on that. You can find all these answers too guys in this magazine and look at the cover of that magazine. Isn't that way cool? That's past cool. That's us guys. Anyway, my name is Kirk. I'm with Kirk Giordano plastering Jason on the camera. I got everybody waiting like Arlo and Luli. We're getting ready to go for a job. So we thank you for watching and as usual we'll see you guys on the next one. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. 
My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.